last week here on South Atlantic Pro Wrestling, Mount Stud Stable finally erupted as Curtis Thompson came to blows with members of the Tennessee Studs on Courage over Thompson's contract. And when the dust had settled, the pride of Pit Bulldog Spike was hurt a lot worse than his jaw, but the U.S. male was still under contract to the Tennessee Stud. Today, Curtis Thompson takes on Pit Bulldog Spike, the fate of Thompson's contract hanging in the balance in our winner-take-all main event. Plus, we'll see Playboy Gary Hart latest entry, The Man Eater. Hello, wrestling fans. Frank Dusick here at ringside once again with the coach Gene Ligon for another hour of South Atlantic Championship Wrestling. And today's main event is a humdigger. Hungover from last week, Bulldog Spike one-on-one -on -one against the U.S. male Curtis Thompson and at stake Curtis Thompson's contract with the stud stable. I can't wait for this one. This is getting real exciting. We got a hungover spike, looks like. He's going to be hungover from something else, I believe, from <laughs> Curtis Thompson. Curtis Thompson is fired up and ready to go, Frank. And this man-eater coming in, boy, that's going to be an exciting thing. What an impressive individual this man-eater is. That animal, I'm not exactly sure where he's from, but Playboy Gary Hart has a long history of sending men like that to us. Plus, Ranger Ross and Miss Torelli together as a tag team. But right now, we need to go to the ring for our first match, War Eagle, Chris Chavis. Championship Wrestling, and we got a main event today, or what? Curtis Thompson against Bulldog Spike. I can't believe it, Frank. You, how'd you get this matched up? I don't know. You done it good. Well, brother, I'll tell you what. It was either have it tonight or have it last night, last week on the close. And I wanted to make sure the wrestling fans could see it. The only way to do it was to change the schedule and get it on this show. And that's just exactly what we've done. We're coming to you once again from beautiful Jordan Matthews High School in Siler City, North Carolina, home of the. the Silas City Moose Lodge number 1877. The Fighting Jets of Jordan Matthews. That's right. A good headlock right there by Mike Rex there. Mike Rex using a boot in the stomach to set it up. Oh, relax. Suplex for the big man from Robinson County. That's turning a hold into your advantage. And doing it well. Chris Chavis learns oh. very quickly about the sport of professional wrestling. Of course, Chavis uh, a, a very uh, excelled academically as well as athletically in high school and at James Madison University. Played a year of pro football, won several bodybuilding contests. Hails from Robinson County, Pembroke, North Carolina. To the top. Look at this. To the top. War Eagle Chris Chavis. Oh, he's down. I think he's down and he's out, Frank. Mike Rex looked like a big old oak tree just crashing down. And here he goes, the War Eagle, Chris Chavis, into his dance. Rex still flat on his back. Chavis picking him up to administer more punishment. He's going to whip him off right there. What's he going to do now, Frank? Oh, he pisses him up real high. Oh, Chris. Back to what push strength shown there. Chavis, of course, one of the two that helped to injure Big Tech Salinger using that superplex. The superplex, of course, made, made famous in Japan by Anoki over this country by the Super Destroyer, Scott Irwin, an old friend of yours and mine. Ooh. Oh, a big chop. He's down like an old tree, Frank. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, that chop resounded throughout the auditorium. But Chris War Eagle Chavis, of course, trying to show a little bit of the aggression and send a message over to the stud stable. Well, he sent one in the form of an injury to, Kurt, to uh, Tex Salinger a couple of weeks ago. Of course, Curtis Thompson having something to do with that, having walked out of the match. Man, that thing between Curtis Thompson and uh, Bulldog Spike and all of the stud stable, that's going to be a war when that one comes up. There can only be one stud in the stud stable and it looks like somebody's trying to take territory yeah there's only room for one head at the top and that head <laughs> well it's, it's gonna be curious to see who it is whether well, it's gonna be curtis thompson or the tennessee stud of course a lot of folks over the years have tried to upset the tennessee stud a lot of men have tried and, and to steal a corny expression a lot of men have died look at this punches having no effect war eagle chris chavis standing like a like a drug store indian or cigar store indian nothing having any effect on him I tell you what, Mike Rex uh, doesn't have all the power in the world because of all the punches he's taken. His punches just lack the sting they need. Well, Rex going at this thing all wrong, too. Look at that. He must have been a good seven, eight, nine feet in the air on that. Again, it was the power of the War Eagle Chris Chavis elevating Mike Rex. Rex has, doesn't have the power of Chris Chavis, doesn't have the experience of Chris Chavis. To me, Coach, he went at this match all wrong. He should have gone at this match from more of a finesse standpoint rather than trying to pull the big man from Pembroke, North Carolina. Well, he's trying to do something he's, he's, he can't go against. Uh, his power, no matter on his best day and Chris's worst day, power, he's not going to win. No, he could out-wrestle him maybe, but power? Forget it. Were I to have to wrestle a man like Chris Chavis, I would definitely depend on finesse. I would depend on wrestling ability versus 
trying to fire up that Indian temper. I mean, you remember the great chief Wahoo McDaniels. Huh? When, when you fired up that temper, this, this man's the same way. He's got that quick temper. When you fire it up, that, that Indian blood gets to pumping. This guy is just rough and tough and hard to bluff. There it is, a big power slam, Frank. This is unbelievable. This crowd is really excited. The big Indian doing the war hoop dance. Bends over and picks him up. Let's see what he does with it. Oh, a chop. That might took his head off, Frank. Nearly took out Byron Richards, too. He was out of position when the young man, Mike Rex, came flying back. Oh, a big clothesline on the chest. And I was going to say, that clothesline was rather low on the body and still had the effect to knock the man over. There he goes. He's up. He's got him up. He's going to do that big old... What does he call this, Frank? I don't know, brother. But Hoffman Sika won the World Tag Team Championships years ago. Got the hook of the leg. That shit spelled the end. You got it. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, in just over four minutes, the War Eagle, Chris Chavis. Right now, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with the Stud Stable and the Tennessee Stud. Looking forward to, because we're about to do something right here that is going to shock the wrestling world. People don't know it, but... Playboy Gary Hart and the Tennessee Stud. Been buddies way down the line. Every time I go out to Dallas, Texas, who do I call up when I first get off the airplane? Gary Hart. I call Playboy Gary Hart. I'll tell you why. Because that Playboy speaks for itself, baby. Because when you want to have fun in Dallas, Texas, you go see the Playboy. But I didn't go see him this time about fun. But before we get into all of that, I want to clear up something right now. Everybody's waiting for the big match. Can Curtis Thompson win back his contract? There ain't a way in the world. Can he beat you, Spikes? <laughs> Curtis Thompson, you're dreaming. I made it up to here with you. The only thing you're going to be toting in that cheap piece of junk mail bag is your lips <laughs> when I get done ripping them off your body one piece at a time, brother. <laughs> you know, this is an important match. I know because all the freeloaders out there in Carolina, you know, they like to freeload anyway. They got an opportunity to freeload real high class because they're going to get to see you put their own Carolina boy. I'm talking about that Carolina winner of theirs, the man that always gets the mail there in rain, in snow, sleet. He don't give a, he gets the mail there. But baby, I don't think today Curtis is going to be getting any mail anywhere. And then, for the big moment, let me go back to it. Everybody's saying, what's Stud getting to? What's the thing about Gary Hart? What did he do out in Texas? Let me clear it up for all you dummies out there. This is another little freebie for you, so I want you to watch real, real close. I went out and talked to Gary Hart about this. <laughs> Take a look at it. It's the man eater, 300 pounds of devastation, looking at you, stud stable. He's the man. Boy, oh boy, I don't know, coach. You know, Playboy Gary Hart. We talked about the odd assortment of wrestlers he's brought into the wrestling world. Well, he has sold the rights to this one to the Tennessee Stud, Robert Fuller. And this guy, the man-eater, man, I don't know what they're going to do with this guy. I mean, he's just, uh, he's about as wide as he is tall. He's got that, that South Pacific Samoan Tahitian type type of attitude. That attitude, I saw off of... my new contract, man. Tell the people about my new man on contract. We're trying to, if you'll just okay, relax. That's what I'm Why don't you let us do the commentary and you go do the talking over there? I hate it when somebody wants to get in the middle of the thing. Holy mackerel. Anyway, what I was saying, I saw Alpha and Sika, who are Samoan, eat a live mouse one night in a dressing room in New Orleans. Just picked him up, got him up in a corner, and ate this live mouse. So that gives you the idea of the type of person you're dealing with. This young man here... <laughs> Back in the dressing room after last week's match, Fuller had a bag, and over it, I mean, it really wasn't smelling real good. In the bag, Coach, was raw chicken, and he was feeding this guy raw chicken, not cooked, not boiled, raw chicken. This guy is just, oh. holy mackerel, did the ring shake then? This man is... There's the stomach oh, claw. He's got There's the claw. There's the stomach claw. That's it. Fritz von Erich made the claw famous. And right now, you see the stomach claw. They're screaming. This match is over. As quickly as it started, the man-eater, the newest addition to the stud stable, has just annihilated young Robert Campbell. You look at that face. Holy mackerel. Talk about a face only a mother can love. This guy's got one. I don't think his mother can love Whoa, that. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll be back with more. But right now, let's hear about wrestling coming up in your area.
big issue at hand here, you know, is the stud stable in Jones's Rangers. And I tell you, Ranger Ross looks like the stud stable is slowly taking that big fall. You know, Tex Salinger, he's down now, just like I said before. We're fighting fire with fire, and we're going to continue fighting fire with fire, you know. He's bringing all these guys in. Let me tell you something, Fuller. You can break anyone you want to. Man-eater, anyone. The big thing about Jones' Rangers is we stick together as a team. And we're always going to stick together as a team. No matter what you do, Stud Stable, we're going to be there. And I'll tell you another thing. It's about time those championship belts and tag team belts come to this side. And I tell you, I'm looking for that heavyweight championship belt. I know you are, Ranger Ross, and I tell you, what do you have to say? Well, you know, that's what it's all about is the championship belt. But first of all, I want to take a time out here to say a special hello to all my buddies that's serving over in Saudi Arabia. You know, war isn't an easy thing, but I read a, I read a thing one time when you go to Ranger School, it's got a big sign up there that says, the more you sweat in tra training, the less you bleed in combat. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. Jones's Rangers been doing a lot of sweating, so there ain't going to be no bloodshed here. So, Stud and your stable, you know, there's mutiny going on right now. There's some turmoil going on in the Stud stable. So, but Jones's Rangers are here to stay, and those belts, you know, everything's turning around. What goes around comes around. Look like we might get the belt by Christmas. <laughs> Ellie! And from Ackworth, Georgia, 240 pounds, Ranger Russ. I'll tell you one thing, this ought to be an exciting match. A tag team of this cap capabilities, Ranger Ross, hero from America, and of course, Mr. Wrestling himself, Vince Torelli. This ought to be a fantastic match, Frank. I'm looking forward to it. Two good, stylish wrestlers against two rough and tough brutes. Well, I'll tell you what, if you put uh, you put your money on somebody, folks, I bet my money on Torelli and, uh, and Ross. Of course, Vince Torelli was runner-up in the 1988 Olympic trials in the 220-pound class. The man who beat him and represented America in the 220-pound class won the gold medal. So that tells you a little, a little bit about the wrestling ability about the wrestling ability of Vince Torelli. And of course, Ranger Ross. Ranger Ross has something that nobody else in South Atlantic wrestling can say. He has been tried by fire. That's he right. has been tried under fire. So you know what's in the heart. You know what, what kind of abilities, what kind of skills Ranger Ross has. To me, Dan Grundy and the White Knight are untried. Look oh. at this. Now, I've seen that move used, but I've only seen it used by wrestlers. Most, well, Tiger Mask, of course, from Japan, the great Japanese star. Holy mackerel, there's some tag team wrestling. And, of course, I was going to say the legendary Mil Mascaris. Mil Mascaris, of course, one of the great wrestlers, man of a thousand masks. A thousand masks. Mil Mascaris had the pleasure of, of, of being associated with him down in Texas on several occasions. A fine gentleman, indeed. And now, Big Dan Grundy from Greensboro, North Carolina, neighboring we're in Siler City, some 40 miles away. Obviously, Dan Grundy's reputation in this part of the triad has exceeded itself because the wrestling fans do not have any love for Dan Grundy. Yeah, Dan Grundy's been wrestling in these parks up in this area, and the uh, minor, minor leagues of professional wrestling has made a reputation for himself as a rough and tough type character. And now moved up to the major leagues, and Dan Grundy is not welcomed by the crowd. Not welcome at all. You're exactly right, Coach. Torelli showing some of that vast arsenal of wrestling skills that he has. Vince Torelli, of course, also in addition to having won the uh, the uh, runner-up in the Olympic trials, he also won several tough man contests, both here in North Carolina and in his home state of California. So you're looking at a man who has wrestling skill as well as coach the ability to mix it up. That's right. Vince Torelli, of course, a tough man in every which way. And there he is, Big Dan, coming right at the camera. Whoa. Oh, Frank, I thought he was going to come right to the camera with us. What a great, great shot. Robert Warren, of course, our, our director, getting some tremendous shots. As right now, it's Ranger Ross getting some tremendous shots of his own in on Big Dan Grundy. There's that savant kick again. Call up top to the head. Ooh, back fist, front fist. Well, I'm glad you're familiar with these terms. Well, I mean, it looked like he hit him in the back of his fist, didn't it? <laughs> I think that's what he got the name for. I should have known, Coach. I should have known. Of course, there they are. Now taking a little breather, he makes a tag. Dan Grundy gladly getting out of the ring. In the background, of course, you see a part of this near-capacity crowd here at Jordan Matthews High School, Siler City, North Carolina, a number one fundraiser. You know, Coach, we talk about it all the time, the South Atlantic Championship Wrestling Unlike all the other major federations where you have to travel to the big the big uh, coliseums to see them, you have to travel to, to the 23,000 seat, to the 50,000, 60,000 seat, 
venues. South Atlantic Wrestling brings the same TV stars you're seeing right here every week, right into your hometown. I mean, we are here in Siler City, North Carolina. You're not going to see any other major wrestling organization coming to Siler City. And that's what separates South Atlantic Wrestling from all the others. We give something back to the community. Family price tickets are a family of four can attend South Atlantic Wrestling for $20 or less in most occasions. And we, and we leave something in the community because we're leaving money tonight with the Moose Lodge, number 1877, to help their mini programs. They have a minor league, or a, uh, like a Pop Warner football team that they sponsor here. And that's a part of what we're, we're raising money for here tonight with that Pop Warner football team. Big Dan missing a big elbow right there. <laughs> Ranger Ross moves out of the way. And of course, they're, oh, he missed the drop kick. He sure did. Oh. He missed it by a mile. Grundy, face. Grundy calling for the boot. Boom! And the big man from Ackworth, Georgia, now being abused. Dan Grundy showing a little bit of tag team wrestling of his own. A block. You know, you've got to the count of five to get out of the ring, and Grundy showing a block to keep Ross from making the tag to the fresh man, Vince Torelli. Of course, this match is getting real rough and tough as it seems. They've made a little bit of a, 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 a combination of tag team wrestling there has taken advantage of one man, and that's what this is all about. I mean, you know we got here to wrestle single match all night long. It's a tag team. Well, we, we, saw, we saw just a couple of weeks ago what happens when you do that, when you wrestle a single match, as Big Tech Salinger tried to wrestle a single match against... Uh, War Eagle, Chris Chavis, and Tommy, Tommy Siebel. And for his efforts, he got two broken ribs. That's right. Oh, Ranger Ross, one big tackle right there. He gets covered. A one, a two. He kicks out just barely, Frank. Ooh, just barely indeed. As the White Knight right now should know very little about him other than he's showing a little bit of wrestling skill. Once again with the cover and a hook, hook of the leg a second time, showing that he has some wrestling expertise, Coach. Ranger's going to have to come up with something special right here. There's a tag out. Big Dan Grundy comes in having trouble getting in. That's giving the Ranger a little bit of time might be too much time well that shows the uh, the uh, lack of teamwork between Grundy and the White Knight that comes from not working I assume as a team on a regular basis of course Torelli and uh, and Ross part of Jones's Rangers they've worked together on more than one occasion here they are again the big White yeah, Knight the comes a, slow. a big high drop kick another high drop kick all the way up to Big Dan Grundy a body slam holy mackerel Vince Torelli got him hooked belly to belly. That could spell the end. The White Knight is getting covered. Ranger Ross has got him on the outside. It is all over. Belly to belly suplex. Your winners from Jones's Rangers, Ranger Ross and Vince Torelli in impressive style. Jones's Rangers showing themselves to be victorious. Unbelievable. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to information about wrestling commitment in your hometown, and then we're going to be back with our main event, the U.S. Bell Curtis Thompson against the Pit Bulldog Spike. Coach South Atlantic Championship Wrestling, right there is the man on the hour, the U.S. Bell Curtis Thompson, and he has got his hands full tonight as he takes on, in our main event, the Bulldog Spike. I tell you, I can't wait to see this match. This is going to be something that the fans of professional wrestling had better just sit back and enjoy it, get your popcorn out and your Coca-Cola, because this is going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun for you and me. It's not going to be so much fun for the U.S. male Curtis Thompson, and it certainly won't be any fun for Bulldog Spike. Speaking of which, there he is right now from the stud stable. Let me introduce him to the house crowd. And from the state of New Jersey, at 242 pounds, one half of your South Atlantic Tag Team Champions, Bulldog Spike. Well, Frank, I can't wait for this action to start. If he tries to skull drag Big Curtis Thompson around, he may find that chain broken half. Well, I don't know. Of course, they don't skull drag him until they got him down and beaten. Of course, getting the U.S. bail down and beaten is going to require a little something, too. Well, the fans are really into it. You see this capacity crowd behind us screaming and yelling as loud as they can. Of course, Curtis Thompson had a different light right now hearing the fans pulling for him. Well, it certainly is different. I know, Coach, in my wrestling career, look at here from behind. The U.S. male going to do a little bit of hot shot and a little bit of showboating for the camera, doing that little strip he does. And he has been attacked from behind in Bulldog Spike all over top of him. You know that the Tennessee stud Robert Fuller has said to get on top of this man and stay on top of him. And that's what he's doing. There he is going to the top ropes. Look out, Frank. He's going to jump down. He's awful close to us. Spike to the top. It's Bulldog Spike to the top. Uh oh he spent too much time. He spent too much time. And now the U.S. Mayo, Curtis Thompson's caught him. Thompson's got him. Oh, he's got it now. He's got those bad tight oh, feet. Oh, mackerel. Bulldog 
spike caught on that top rope, and that is no man's land and sent crashing very unceremoniously to the floor, Coach. I'll tell you something right now. That's six feet down onto a very hard mat. That hurts. It is definitely a rude awakening when you come crashing down. Like the man said, the fall wasn't bad before that sudden stops a booger bear. I know it. There he goes, Curtis Thompson, just trying to get Spike off his feet. Wait a minute. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Whoa, that was the wrong place to be. Spike oh, right there. And he is canceling his stamp right now. The U.S. male, Curtis Thompson, leaving a postmark on the right ear of Bulldog Spike. He's going to send him back a rubber full of postage due. <laughs> I guess so. No, look at here. Spike playing a little possum back in the U.S. mail into the corner. And now it's Bulldog Spike going to work in the corner on the U.S. mail, Curtis Thompson. You see the shots are going against the ear and the side of the head, causing an equilibrium problems. He's going to reverse it on him. A chop right across that chest. Oh, what camera work we're getting as the U.S. mail, Curtis Thompson, going to work with boots and kicks and punches all over top of Bulldog Spike. Climbing high atop the ropes there, ready to fire up on him. The camera getting, oh, good camera work right there. You saw a quick little shot in the solar plexus knock him down. And these guys, this thing is a full-scale war, Coach. We have seen no wrestling at all so far. Of course, it all started last week. You saw a little bit of it in the beginning of the show. He rolls him up, Frank. One, two. Oh, oh man, boy. Frank, you almost got the bell rung right there, I do believe. He came close as Bulldog Spike. Well, watch out, He's Frank, out He's right next to you. That's you look, you right. look a lot like Curtis Thompson, so get out of the way. He might want to hit you. Yeah, I wish. If I look <laughs> like Curtis Thompson, I might still be wrestling. All right. But this, uh, you can't call what we're seeing right now wrestling. What we're seeing right now is a battle. It started last week. They're playing with the contract. The winner of this match, of course, gets the contract. If, stu if Stud's team wins, if Spike wins, the contract of the U.S. male Curtis Thompson stays in the stud stable. But if Curtis Thompson wins, then the contract, of course, reverts to Curtis Thompson, and he is a, uh, a quote, free man, unquote. That's right, Frank. I do believe that that stipulation there will give Curtis a little more fire. Of course, if, if Spike doesn't come through and do what he should do, I know he's going to be mad because part of that money is going in his pocket, too. Well, that's exactly right. Of course, Robert Fuller could have picked him a, a more easily manipulated or easily excited individual than Bulldog Spike. We've seen how easily Fuller fires him up. Up over top, leap leapfrog. Oh! No, nope. turn around! Yo! Goodness gracious, Spike to go up for a leapfrog, a little hook slide. He looked like uh, Vince Coleman slide underneath there for the St. Louis Cardinals, and it's the U.S. male Curtis Thompson just going to work over top. Holy mackerel. He's on the ground, Frank, a good clothesline over the top ropes. The ropes bend real good. And, of course, who gets dumped on the floor? Spike himself. Now, a lot of fans say, why is that not a disqualification? The reason that is not a disqualification, that was not an intentional throwing over the top rope. There was a clothesline move, and it was the moment, momentum that took Bulldog Spike over the top rope, just as it was momentum that brought him back over that top rope and into the ring. Well, that's conjecture right there. We can go through a lot of things here. A lot of people think that that's a deliberate move to knock him over the top ropes, but in this case, eh, he got what he deserved. Well, you know, uh, Curtis Thompson has been wrestling for several years. We were talking back in the dress room a little earlier. We both wrestled in, in different areas of the country, of course, in different decades, but in different areas of the country. And we were discussing some of the same people we both knew. But uh, he's been around a little bit. He knows the ins and outs just a little bit. Now, he lacks the, uh, the expertise or the experience, let's say, of, uh, of number one Paul Jones, for instance. He lacks his expertise, but then who doesn't lack the expertise of, of Paul Jones? But at the same time, he has learned enough that he can do things like that. That close line, he knew he was close to the rope. He knew he'd probably knock him over the top. But he also knew that the referee, in all likelihood, would not call a disqualification. Of course, in a match like this, the referee's going to let the boys play. Well, sure, it's like any sport. When you get a, a football game or you get a high-stakes high, high stakes basketball game, most good referees and umpires, they're going to let the boys play. And that's just exactly what Roddy Hanna's doing right here. He's letting the boys play. There he is, setting him up for the big spike. He's going to stand. He got him close. Oh, not quite, not quite. Setting oh. the pile driver. No. Spike, very short, very compactly built, able to, to get his center of gravity low enough that the big man, the big man was not able to get inside of there and, and do, the, do the pile driver. Coach, we got to pay the bills. We need to jump.
both ready to take a break. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to bring as much of this match to you as we can, but in order for us to do that, we're going to have to break away right now for some commercial messages. I'm sorry for you fans at home, but we'll be back with as much of this match as we can bring you right after this. Between the pound on the U.S. mail, Curtis Thompson. Curtis with a reversal up over top arm drag, and finally Curtis Thompson has changed the momentum. It's the U.S. mail, Curtis Thompson, full arm drag now on the man from the stud stable. Boy, I tell you, if you'd have seen the action while y'all are going for the commercial TV, the moves that were being made, things I had never seen before myself in professional wrestling. Frank, goes back to things I know you haven't even seen before. Well, we talked about it. I've seen some things in this show in the last few weeks I've never seen before. But that's what happens to you, ladies and gentlemen at home. I'm sorry for you, but if you're not here in the arena, you're going to miss what, what happens when the commercial breaks come. we got to pay the bills. Now, if you're one of this near-capacity crowd here in Silas City, or if you come to one of the wrestling matches, if you're in... Uh, well, right after Christmas, speaking of which, Mary, we want to wish Merry Christmas to everybody. But if you're here right after Christmas in uh, in, in uh, Rockingham or in Monroe or, or da Dalzell or, or Pennington Gap or Lenore, any of the places where we're going to be, when you see South Atlantic Wrestling coming your way, ladies and gentlemen, don't miss the opportunity to please go to the wrestling matches because you're going to have the most fun you've ever had in your life, and you're not going to have to miss things that are happening during the commercial breaks. That's right. There's oh, a good move. boy. A big move right there. A big move indeed. The top of the head planted solidly on the chin. And that sudden stop has just taken the starch right out right now. You know there's nothing but stars in the eyes and in the mind right now of Curtis Thompson. Anybody ever had their self hitting the jaw from the, an uppercut situation? You've got to move when a man drops down and you go down with it. And the next thing you feel is the top of a man's skull going through your jaw. It doesn't feel real good at all. In football, we, we used to call that getting your bell rung. Ooh. <laughs> right now, it's ringing like, like the, the Liberty right. Bell. You better believe it. There's a crack in that bell right now. Curtis Thompson still on his back, finally being drugged to his feet. He's nearly unconscious. And I wonder right now, if, if I were in Spike's position, Coach, I have to think that I would be shooting in there and trying to hook him up for some kind of a pin. I don't think a percussion pin. I think I would tie him up with a wrestling move, maybe a, a standing guillotine or something, and try to tie up both sides of the big man. But Spike elects to continue with the percussion. He blocks it. He hip toss. <laughs> A move that has cost him is once again the U.S. male Curtis Thompson back on top. And it, like I say, I think I would have tried to tie the big man up and, and sneak a one, two, three in myself. I tell you what, you know, they say in, in, in boxing, uh, I've seen men get their bell rung before where they're out of it. And you've got to put him away right away because you can hit him and bring him back to life. That's really and truly too that you can actually shock him, but you can actually shock him back into life. And I'm not sure if that's what happened or if they just bought a little time. I'll tell you, part of it, too, is the intestinal fortitude of this man right here, the U.S. male, Curtis Thompson. Of course, Curtis Thompson is being tested tonight. He's not had as tight, tougher matches as he's had with these boys tonight. Spike, of course, very rugged, very tough, in great shape. And take nothing away from him. This man is in great condition. But I have to ask myself, go ahead, if... If I were Robert Fuller and I were going to send one man out in singles competition against Curtis Thompson, I think that I would have sent the man eater for two reasons. Number one, as you say, not taking anything from Bulldog Spike, but he is part of a tag team. He is not accustomed to wrestling single style wrestling where Curtis Thompson is. And number two, Certainly, if there's anybody who hasn't been scouted, look at there. The boot just caught him right upside the head. What a camera angle. If there is a man who has not been scouted, it has to be oh. the man-eater. And now, repay, repayment time as the U.S. male Curtis Thompson is out on the floor next to us. Out, I don't Mike. like the looks of this because here comes Bulldog Spike. You just stay over there and wrestle who you're wrestling. You just stay away from me, that's for sure. Look at here, he's going to slam him on the floor. Oh. A gymnasium floor. You can see the wood down there. This is a high school gym we're wrestling in in Siler City, Jordan Matthews High School gym. And right now, Curtis Thompson in a world of hurt outside the floor as the stud stable representative, Pet Bulldog Spike, is just carrying it to the man from Newland, North Carolina. I'll tell you what, he's in very bad disarray right now. Of course, Curtis Thompson getting up sucking the wind, trying to get it up a little more, trying to get a little more fire into it. This is where the conditioning pays off. It's suck it up time right now for sure. He's got to get back in the ring. Fourth quarter, as they'd say in football, can you make it through fourth quarter? I don't know. He needs to make it right now, though. I'll tell you what, Curtis, hanging on for dear life there. Of course, Spike taking his time, maybe taking too much time. Whoa, wait a minute. He gives him a good shot to the gut. He's going to sunset, flip, break. Spike Spike the referee kicked the, the foul. I can't Ruffin believe he's going. Ahead, kicked one. 
two. Oh, almost a three count. I can't believe that. And Ronnie Hanna, by kicking the hands off, very nearly spelled the end to the Stud Stable Association with the U.S. Mail, Curtis Thompson. I thought we had him here, boy. Oh. Time and time again, I've seen more power moves, more percussion moves, as you'd say, Frank, than I've seen in a long time. These men are taking punishment and delivering punishment. It looks like a big band, all the percussion we're seeing here today, huh? Over top, he's in! No, I thought we were going to see the loose, uh, the paddle cut. Oh. Oh. Bulldog Spike sent to the floor. Spike crashed into the floor, and now it's the U.S. Mail, Curtis Thompson. They're on after Bulldog Spike, and they're outside the floor. Holy mackerel, we just got pandemonium reigning supreme here in the ring. They're outside on the floor, they're inside in the ring. They're all over the place, Frank. What is going on? This is just, this is not a wrestling well, match anymore. This is a war. Well, Coach, it's what we expected. It's exactly what we expected after last week and after the altercation between the Tennessee Stud. We knew this thing was going to turn into a battle. No, no, no. Look out from behind. Wait from a minute. Behind. Here comes Wait a minute. Bulldog. Watch Put, yourself. Ring the bell. Watch yourself. Ring the bell. We're calling for a disqualification. Roddy had us calling for the disqualification. I assume the Pit Bulldogs are going to be disqualified, but that doesn't do a bit of good right now for the U.S. Bay Curtis Thompson as he is being assaulted by both Rex and Spike of the Pit Bulldogs. Back the bell's ringing and they still are going at it. Wait a minute! Oh! He got him! Clothesline. He got him! Double clothesline up over top and it's the U.S. Mayo Curtis Thompson carrying it to the... Hold on! The stud's here! The stud's here! Tennessee stud Robert Fuller is in the ring. Look out! Here's the Tennessee stud. Down goes the referee. It's a four-on-one situation. Three-on-one situation. And there's not a friend in sight anywhere for the U.S. Mail, Curtis Thompson. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, the crowd's right. Look. He's here. Ranger Ross. Rangers. They brought him on. They're fired up. Tennessee Stud is going to get the Army. Is here to kick tail. And the man-eaters hit the ring. The big man-eater. The big man from the Polynesian Islands. The man-eater all over top of the U.S. Mail, Curtis Thompson. This thing is a war. It's pandemonium. Chris Chavis, the War Eagle. It's Rangers and Stud Stable. Rangers and Stud Stable are all over the ring. Unbelievable action. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what to say. We're going to have to take a break. I don't I'm know checking what the ref. Holy macro referees down. Rangers and Stud Stable fighting all over the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to take a break. We're just going to have to go to commercial and straighten this thing out. We'll be back with more right after this for South Atlantic Championship Wrestling. The man-eaters outside the ring. You see him right there pounding on the U.S. Mail. Curtis Thompson inside the ring. It's Bulldogs, War Eagle, Torelli, Chavis, the Tennessee stud. This thing is a full-scale war as oh. finally the big man-eater has gone down. Back into the ring they go. Unbelievable. Back and forth, up and down. Coach, I don't know how much of this war I can stand. I certainly don't know how much more they can stand inside the ring. Ranger Ross having his head and head, neck just twisted by the Tennessee stud. You see the Bulldogs, Torelli, Chavis being beat on right there. This is just back and forth and up and down. There's so much going on, I can't call it. I can't call it right now. Ooh, the stud's right above our heads, Frank. The Tennessee stud, Robert Fuller now, and Ranger Ross battling it out. Let's get a shot of that right there. Look at this, would you? What camera angles we're getting tonight as they continue just to assault one another. Unbelievable wrestling action right here. Siler City, Jordan Matthews High School. Just a sample of South Atlantic wrestling at its best.